Hi there everyone. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at this. This is the new Jumper T20S and it's a compact radio from Jumper that uses full-sized gimbals. It's got a bit similar to the Radio Master Boxer but even a little bit smaller. I'm going to be taking you through all of the key features of this new radio on the bench and then I'm going to be talking about why I am benching my Radio Master TX16S to make this my daily driver radio for at least the next few months to see how it works for me. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. All right, let's start by going through the key features of this T20S. And to start with, this is an Edge TX radio. So it's running the open source Edge TX firmware, the same as other radios from Radio Master and Jumper beforehand. And if you've used an Open TX or an Edge TX radio, you're gonna be very familiar with the look and feel of all the menus and setup in this radio. It has an internal one watt Express LRS transmitter, and you can either get a 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz version. So whether you're running 2.4 gig or 900 megahertz, you can get a, uh, a version of the radio that's gonna be right for that. The antenna for the radio is this kind of rigid antenna and it's able to be rotated as well. So you can rotate it to align the antenna with the antenna on your quad to make sure you get the best possible range. Coming to the front of the radio, the gimbals really dominate the front of the radio and these are full size gimbals and there are two versions. You can get a Hall Effect gimbal or slightly more expensive, an RDC90 gimbal, which has a few more CNC metal components in it. These are the RDC90 gimbals and they feel really nice. I am not by any means a gimbal snob. I don't know what great gimbals feel like and I'm not that sensitive to it, but certainly these gimbals feel at least as good as the Hall gimbals on my TX16S and they don't have any noticeable jitter um, or anything like that, even when I turn off the, the ADC filter within the radio. This radio has loads of buttons and switches, most of which I'm probably not gonna use because I fly mainly FPV quads, but they has a heap of buttons and switches as well as potentiometers and sliders and things like that so that uh, you can set that up exactly how you want for flying either fixed wing or for doing FPV. Turning the radio over, we can take a look at the battery bay and it comes with this little carriage for 21700 cells or you can get a, a battery pack like this one from Radio Master, which has 21700 cells in it and all of the cabling and everything like that. And then you can just plug it in. There is loads of space in here for a really big battery. So this 5000 milliamp hour fits just fine. And that's gonna give the battery a really good long lifetime within the radio. This radio can support external modules. And if I peel off this bit of rubber, you can see that there is power for the external module and also a data connection here. And there are mounting points here for the external module so you can secure it to the back of the radio. There's no internal four in one module version of this radio available, but you can get an external jumper four in one module if you, if you wanna fly models that require that type of transmission. Looking now at the top of the radio, we can see that we have two slider switches, these sort of rotating potentiometers here. We have two of these latching switches, which are just two position latching switches, and then two more two position switches on the top of the radio. We also have a USB-C port for charging and for connecting this radio to the computer for doing firmware updates or using it as a joystick or any of those other things that you can do with an Edge TX radio through the USB port. And we also have a trainer port here. On the front of the radio, these two switches are three position switches. We have the gimbals, which we've already talked about, the trim controls here, four trim controls. And then at the bottom, we have this little panel of extra switches and potentiometers. We've got two rotating potentiometers, two sliding potentiometers, and six mode buttons, which are latching and illuminate. And Jumper is kind enough to provide a, uh, a load of stickers here, which you can stick over these mode buttons, should you want to do that. I don't typically use mode buttons when I'm flying my FPV drone, so I'm probably not gonna use these. But you know, if, you, if this is something that's useful for you to have a, a button for acro, for example, or a button for air mode, then these are perfect for that. And then we have the standard uh, buttons to control the Edge TX firmware here. We've got a menu, page, and back, and a uh, little rotating scroll wheel, which also clicks to, to select items in the menus. Before we carry on with the review, I wanna take a moment to give a huge thank you to everyone who supported me with battery testing equipment. 
I'm pleased to say that all of the equipment is now here and battery testing has begun. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you see those testing videos as soon as they become available. If you get value from the testing work that I do and you want to support the channel and more testing videos, then please consider joining my Patreon. Your support goes a huge way to help me make more and better videos for everyone in the FPV community. If you're interested, there are links down in the video description and I'd really appreciate it if you consider checking them out. At this point, you might be wondering which version of Express LRS is going to be best for you. Do you want 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz? We have to start by saying that all else equal, 900 megahertz is going to give you more range and penetration than 2.4 gigahertz. But despite this, I chose quite a while ago to standardize all of my quads onto 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS. And that's for a couple of really important reasons. The first is antenna size and weight. 2.4 gigahertz antennas are much smaller and lighter than 900 megahertz antennas. They're easier to mount to small quads like micros. And because they're smaller, they tend to be more durable. They don't get caught up and chopped up in props anywhere near as easily in my experience. So you've got that durability, size and weight advantage. The second benefit is the ability to fly with lots of other people without worrying about interference. There is much more space on the 2.4 gigahertz band than there is on the 900 megahertz band. And that means that you're very unlikely to run into interference when flying with lots of other pilots all using 2.4 gigahertz systems. If you're on 900 megahertz and you're flying with lots of other people on 900 megahertz, you are more likely to run into interference and that may actually reduce your range compared to what you get with a 2.4 gigahertz system. This is particularly important in Europe where the 900 megahertz band is really, really narrow. So especially if you're in Europe, I would probably stick with 2.4 gigahertz. And for those of you that are worried about range and penetration, I found that at one watt transmit power, 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS has way more range and penetration than any video link I've ever tested, which means that you are gonna run out of video long before you run out of control link if you're running one watt Express LRS. So with that in mind, I don't think there's much benefit to moving to 900 megahertz, given that you know your video link is gonna give out long before um, you run into that issue. Where I think the Jumper T20 really impresses is in a comparison against a full-size radio. So this is my Radio Master TX16S. The T20 has the same number of controls as the TX16S. It's got two additional potentiometers, but it has two fewer switches. So, but it's got the same number of controls. It's got the same sized gimbals. They're both full-size gimbals. And the battery bay on the T20 is very nearly as big as the battery bay on the TX16S. So really, you've reduced the form factor by a really sizable margin, and you haven't really lost much in terms of functionality. And I actually think that the rigid antenna on the T20 is a little bit nicer than the rigid antenna on the TX16S, so that's a benefit. But what you have gained is a big reduction in size and weight, and that's gonna play a lot into the ergonomics of this radio. Let's talk about ergonomics how the radio feels in the hand, how easy it is to access all of the switches when you're flying and get full range of motion on the gimbals are really important for how enjoyable the radio is to use and how precise you're able to be with it when you're flying. And here, I think the Jumper T20 does a really exceptional job. It fits really easily in my hand. I'm easily able to access all of the switches and I get full range of motion on the gimbals comfortably, whether I'm using a thumb grip or a pinch grip and it's much more ergonomic than my previous radio, the TX16S. And this is the main reason why I'm looking to move over to the Jumper T20 as my daily driver radio now, uh, move away from the TX16S, is because the ergonomics of it, for me, are so much better. And that's really the key benefit that I think this radio offers over a traditional full-size radio. In terms of ergonomics, it's not perfect. There is one annoying thing about this radio that I have to mention so that you're aware of it and also hopefully so that Jumper become aware of it and they can fix it in future versions. The T20 is perfectly balanced on its neck strap attachment point when the battery is not inserted. So clearly they know where the center of gravity is of the radio and they've put the lanyard attachment point in that spot when the battery is not inserted. However, when you put the battery in, the radio becomes tail heavy and it hangs down at an angle. 
jumper, please fix this in your future radios. The radio needs to be perfectly balanced on the lanyard strap when the battery is in place because everyone is going to be flying it with the battery in place. That's when it needs to be balanced. It doesn't need to be balanced with the battery bay empty. If they fix that and they move the attachment point so that the radio is perfectly balanced with the battery in place, that would be ideal. As it is, I'm going to be getting a little metal balancing bar um, so that I can move the lanyard attachment point down a little bit and get that balance. And if you're someone who really likes the radio to be balanced on the neck strap, then you're going to want to do something similar. But hopefully in future versions of radios from Jumper, they're going to take this note on board and make sure that the radio is balanced when the battery is in place. And if they do that, then that's going to be brilliant. So that brings us to the conclusions. And I think the Jumper T20 is one of, if not the best radio for FPV that I've ever seen. It's got high quality full size gimbals. It's got a one watt internal ELRS module. It's got all the controls and features that you would expect on a full size radio, but the ergonomics are absolutely fantastic. And to my mind, better even than the Radio Master Boxer in terms of ergonomics. This is really exceptionally good. It's not quite perfect, but it's pretty darn close. If there were just a couple of things that I would change, one is I would move the screen down here and make it bigger and maybe move these potentiometers up there and, and get rid of these S3 and S4 sliders because we don't really need those in FPV. And I would probably move this uh, lanyard attachment point down a little bit, maybe swap it with the power button to get the radio perfectly balanced when the battery is inserted. But these are very minor things. With that said, I think the Jumper T20 is pretty nearly perfect for me. And if you think it's gonna be perfect for you, then there are links down in the video description to where you can pick yours up. And they are affiliate links, which means if you use them, I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps support the channel and the work that I'm doing here. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.